So today we are talking about postulates, and this is a word that maybe you have or haven't heard before. So let's go ahead and start off by defining it. So a postulate is simply a statement that we accept as true. Okay, and typically these are ones that you can, I mean, you can reason your way to these, but it's uh, awfully difficult to sort of prove. So for example, we already talked about one of them and it was that any two points are collinear. So we had this discuss discussion yesterday about this. Um, can't I take any two points in the whole wide world or in space? It doesn't matter, no matter where they are. And I could literally connect them with a straight line. So if I had like that magic laser beam that could cut through walls and steel and trees and whatever else you put in its way, you could imagine that I could just draw a straight line in between any two points, right? But how do you prove that that's true? Uh right? You kind of can't, but you could reason your way there. Yeah, I could totally, and no matter where I put the two points, if I just have, if there's nothing, uh, you know, if I can imagine that they're just an empty space, then there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to connect them. So any two points are going to be collinear. That's our first postulate, and we already talked about this one. Now, um, there is sort of a fancy way that sometimes you see mathy people, they might make this statement, and it basically means the exact same thing. Um, and here's the statement. Any two points determine a line. So that's sort of just fancy language for saying the same thing. All I need are two points to make a line. That's also why when we are naming a line, I only need two points. Because if I know I'm talking about line AB, there's one and only one line that connects lines A and B. Okay, and when I say one line, I mean, yes, you could draw the same line a thousand times, one on top of itself, but they're essentially the same line. So we are, um, if you just draw the same line on top of itself, it's the same line, okay? So we can say, use that phrase, any two points determine a line. So fancy language says the same thing. Similarly, if we go one step further, we talked yesterday a great deal about naming planes, right? Um, so, if you have just like two points are collinear, I can draw a line between any two points. I can draw a plane between any three points. Oh, any three points are planar. So think about this. Um, normally when I'm actually in class, I usually use, do you remember those big Y coins, like the silver and gold coins from big Y? I like to use those cause they, you can imagine they're easy to see and it's like a big point that you have, right? But you know what, hang on, let me grab, I have some coins over here. Okay, so I have some coins. Imagine, I know that they're a little big to represent a point, but imagine that they did. So if I just had three coins, could I take a plane and connect all three of those? So imagine a piece of paper as a plane, and I wanted to come in, and I wanted to connect all of the, have all of those points in that plane. Could I do it? You bet I can. Trying to find a nice, I've got all these colored papers right here. Let's take this green paper. So imagine this green paper is my plane. All three points are in my plane. 
So, um, no matter where those three points are, right, I can move them around, they're still in this plane no matter where they go. What if I took one of these coins and I picked it up off the paper? Now, the three points are no longer in the plane represented by this green piece of paper, but I could take another piece of paper, this white one, for example, and I could arrange it in such a way that it would still hit all three points. It's just going to be sort of slanted upwards like this. Oh, there you go. I know it's so hard to see on a computer screen and not like in real life, but hopefully you can imagine this. So even if one coin was up off the, the desk here, there is still a plane that contains all three of them. Okay, and it doesn't matter, no matter where you put the three in space, if I took two of them and I picked them up and held them, there is still a plane that can connect all three of these. Always. So there is always at least one plane that can contain any three points, no matter where you put them. You could have all three of them in a row. You could have them spread out. You could have them no matter where they are. If you have three points, there is a plane that you could draw or imagine that contains all of them. Oh, here's Anthony again. I don't know why we keep losing them. All right. So that's why we're going to say our next postulate, any three points are coplanar. And remember, coplanar just means on the same plane. We did mention this yesterday, but um, just in case you forgot, and I know I actually forgot to tell it to C block, so I will, you could imagine how confused they were on the homework because I used the word coplanar. So any hoosers, um, we can use the same fancy language like we did here that says any two points determine a line. We can say any three points determine a plane. So again, that's just that fancy language that says, if I have three points, there is a plane that contains them. All right. So far, are we okay? All right, I wanna ask you some questions about lines. I have two lines here. What do you call it when the two lines cross? Like that. There's a name that starts with an I for two things that cross like this. Intersecting, absolutely. So if you have two lines that really do cross each other, they're called intersecting lines, right? Okay, good. What do you call these ones that don't intersect like that? Parallel. Yes, parallel. Now, hopefully you can see this on the computer screen. Watch this. What in the world would you call? So I'm going to leave this one flat here, that orange one. If I took this blue one and I picked it up and I put it like this, uh, what do you call these two lines now? Do you know? They're not touching each other. They don't cross, so they're not intersecting. They are definitely not parallel anymore though, right? Because these are parallel lines. So what in the world are these? Does anybody happen to know? So it's with an S. It's a word that you've definitely heard before, but you probably never heard it referred to with lines. Or maybe you did, I don't know. Anybody wanna guess? It's kind of fun. That's okay, I'll tell you. They're called skew lines. Skew lines. So here's two things that we need to do. For parallel lines, right, these guys, you can't just say two lines that don't intersect because that's not technically right anymore. If you said that, I could give you a counterexample. If you said two lines that don't intersect, or that's what parallel lines are, I'd say, okay, well, what about these, right? They don't intersect and they're not parallel. So what are they? So this would be my counterexample to that statement. So what does that tell us? 
saying that uh, parallel lines are just two lines that don't intersect is not a good definition because that's actually not accurate. So we're going to adjust our definition for parallel lines. Just a little bit. We're going to add a word and that fixes everything. They have to be coplanar. So the, in other words, they have to be on the same plane, coplanar lines that never intersect. Now we have a good definition. So if you remember, if I'm looking at my two lines here, they are in the same plane right now. They're both on my paper. So my paper is representing a plane. They're both there. When I do this, they are not in the same plane anymore. I've got one flat on the, on the surface and then one sort of sticking up out of the page. That's not the same plane. So these are no longer coplanar. So that's why we have this new vocab word, skew lines. So let's add that. So these are going to be our non-coplanar. That never intersect. All right, that's what those are, skew lines. So uh, sort of related to this, you might have heard um, the word askew. That you might hear in normal conversation, right? Like, oh, something's, something's askew here. <laughs> but skew lines, non-coplanar lines that never intersect, okay? So we have a, a couple postulates that deal with lines. So, um, our lines and planes actually. So let's go with those and then um, that'll be almost it for the notes. And then I'm just gonna give you some diagrams. I'm gonna ask you a couple questions and we'll be good. All right, so the first one says, if two distinct or separate lines, so we use that word distinct, it just means separate. All right, so if I have two lines that are really two completely different lines, so I'm not talking about the same line, one on top of itself. So if I just go back to my uh, orange and my blue here. So here are two absolutely separate lines if they are going to intersect each other, right? So if I do this and they cross each other, what does their intersection look like? What would you call that thing right there? Which vocab word that we have already talked about? This thing is a, a, a point line or a plane right there. Don't forget you can send me things in the chat. When two lines cross, that thing right there is a Point is correct. Point. So if you have two lines that are actually going to cross, they're going to do so at a point, always. Okay, two separate lines. So I know you might be thinking, well, what if I did this? What if you had this and then you put this one like right here? They intersect at more than just one point. Well, what you have basically just done here is you just drew the same line because lines never end, right? So you just drew one line on top of another one. So that's not two separate lines. So if they are actually going to cross, it will always happen at a single point. Okay. Uh, let's talk about planes. What if you have two distinct planes that intersect? What would their intersection look like? So if two distinct planes... They do so at a – so 
So I'm going to try and show you this. I set up a little demonstration here. Move this down just a smidge. All right, so what I have set up is two planes here. I have a gray one and I have a blue one. So these are my two separate planes. Um, they're completely separate from each other, right? So if two planes are going to intersect, so if they are actually gonna cross each other, I'm gonna just slide this in here like this. Ooh. There we go. So now I have my two planes intersecting. You see that, isn't that neat? So I have the gray and the blue and they are intersecting. What does their intersection look like? So where the blue and the gray are meeting each other, isn't this thing here a line? And I know you might be thinking, well, isn't it a line segment because it ends? But remember, um, planes never end. I'm so sorry, my, my son is here again this morning and he's being awfully loud. Hang on, let me put on my, uh, I'll put my headphones on real fast. I'm so sorry. Can you still hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good. Thank you. All right. So any hoosers? Yes. So we have two planes and they are intersecting and that intersection is a line. Okay. And right. I was just saying, I know it looks like a line segment, but remember that planes never actually end. So, I mean, obviously my index cards end because they're just index cards, but uh, it's going to keep going forever in all directions. So this would just continue. All right, so let's add that in. If two distinct planes intersect, they do so at a line, and it will always be a line. Here's a good question. Do two planes have to intersect? We have parallel lines. Is there such thing as parallel planes? Can you hear that? Oh, can you not hear me? Mr. Orla, can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, all right, so I was asking you if planes have to intersect. We have parallel lines. Can you have parallel planes? You sure can. If you kind of imagine like slices of bread on, in a loaf, right? So all of those would be parallel planes, right? And they could be one on top of another like this. So planes don't have to intersect. But here's what's weird. There is no such thing as skew Oh, I keep losing Anthony. Skew planes does not exist. I can try the same thing. So let me show you with the um, with the lines. This is what I did. I had two lines here. They are parallel. And then I just turned one of them upwards like this. And now they're skew, right? So if I try the same thing with the planes, watch what happens. So here's my parallel planes right now. So they are two planes that are parallel. They are not intersecting each other. If I try to just turn one of them, if I turn it like this, they're still just parallel planes. If I turn it like this, remember that planes go on forever. So it would eventually run right into the other plane. So there's no way that you can configure this that it wouldn't run right into it without being parallel. So planes can only be parallel or intersecting. No such thing as skew planes. You just can't get it because they go on forever in two dimensions, right? So um, there's that. And then the last thing we got to write down, um, if a line not in a plane intersects that plane, it will do so at a point. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what happens if you have a line and a plane intersecting? So if a line that is not in the plane intersects that plane
It will do so at a Let's see if we can get it. So I'm going to take a plane, my blue card in this case, and I will take a line, this orange stick. So if I am going to have the line intersect the plane, where is that inter what is that intersection going to look like? It's just going to hit at a single point. Actually, I have a better diagram. Right. Mm, no, that's not a better diagram. Never mind. I thought I did, but I don't. So if you have a plane and a, a line coming in to hit it, it's only going to hit it at a single point. Okay. So if a line that is not in a plane intersects that plane, it will do so at a point. Okay. So that is it for the notes. So the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to show you a picture and I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. So please do me a favor and be ready to unmute yourself and call out. And we'll see how quickly we can get through these. All right. So here's one image. I'm going to zoom out just a smidge. Okay, there we go. So here, hopefully you can see I have two planes, plane P and plane R. So see how it has those cursive letters in the corner? So I can more quickly refer to these two planes. Okay, you guys ready? Should I call on you one by one? That's probably a great idea, but in the interest of time, I'll just take you calling out. So be fast, you ready? Is point C in plane R? Is point C in plane R? Yes or no? Actually, you know what? I let me I'll do yes or no so I can just look at you giving me thumbs up and thumbs down. If I could find where my gallery view is. Uh, why can't I ever find the buttons? I swear. Maybe I can do it over here. Nope. Uh, Okay, maybe I can do that. So someone just unmute yourself and tell me. Is point C in plane R, yes or no? No. No, correct. Is line CE in plane P? Yes. Yes. Is, okay, here's a trick question. I want everybody to look and think about what your answer would be. Is point I on plane P. So point I is this one down here in the corner. Is point I on plane P, yes or no? Yes. So this is a trick question because it looks like, you're like, well, because yesterday I told you that if I wanted to show you something on the plane, I put it inside this parallelogram, right? And I is certainly not in that parallelogram. But if you remember, I said almost always that's true. Here's the thing. Line AD, right? Line AD. Let's just look at that. That is certainly in plane P. And if line AD never ends, right? And neither does the plane. The plane keeps going forever too. So if line AD is in plane P, then everything on line AD is also in plane P. So uh, point I is definitely on this line. So it is also in plain P. So that can sometimes be uh, a little tricky. All right, let me ask you this. Where do planes R and P intersect? Where do planes R and P intersect? So um, if we just take a quick check back at the notes here, remember what we just said, if two planes intersect, they're going to do so at a line. So your answer should be some line. What line is it where point, uh, planes R and P intersect? 
your answer would be a line here. So it's going to be line what? So now you're really asking yourself, well, how do I name this line? And remember, you have um, to name a line. You can pick any two points on this line. So I could literally have like, I don't know, 16 different answers here because it depends on which two letters you pick. And it could be in any, well, you can't pick H because H is not on the line, right? So you'd pick A, D, B, I, any combination of those two. All right. I'm going to switch images. Let's talk about this one. So here I have this cube, right? So similar to last night's homework, you want to imagine that I have a plane in the front, a plane on the bottom, plane on the left, right, top. And yes, you're going to imagine, I know they aren't technically lines, they are line segments, but if you imagine these as lines, where do they meet? Um, what two planes would intersect where? So let me ask you this question. Um, let's start off easy. Where do lines CD and DH meet? Those two lines, CD and DH. I'm going to um, sort of place these over those so we can see CD and DH. Where do they meet? Right here. If there are two lines and they're going to meet, they're going to meet at a point. So my answer would be point D. Do you see that? Then I might ask you where two planes meet. I might ask you, um, okay, where does the top and this right hand side, those two planes, where do they meet? So the plane represented by the top and the plane represented by the right hand side, where do they come crashing together? It'd be right here. We just said in the notes that if two planes are going to intersect, they're going to do so at a line. So my answer in this case would be line BF. Do you see that? Yes, I'm getting in the chat. Correct, correct, correct. Um, I might ask you to name a line that is skew to CA. Ooh. Let's see if we can try that real quick. So let me put a marker on this line so we see it. All right, so here's line CA. I want someone that's skewed to this. So remember, if it's going to be skew, I can't be parallel. And it also can't intersect. So what you could pick, there's a few, there's a couple different answers, but here's one of them. You could go with line EF up here. Those two lines are never going to meet each other, right? If you're actually envisioning a box, this front edge and that back edge, if they kept going forever, they would never meet each other. So those two would be skew lines. Same thing, you could have also answered GH. Those two are skew. They're never going to meet each other. However, you can't pick CD because those two would meet right here in the corner of um, at point C. All right. What's the deal with FH? These two, what are these two to each other? Are they intersecting, skew, parallel? What are they? They are parallel. And I know you're thinking like, well, what's the plane? There's no plane that they are both in. There is. It's just not one of the faces of the box. You can have a plane that goes diagonally through it and connects both of those lines. So any hoosers, we're low on time as, um, as we were yesterday, but that's okay. We got through everything that we needed to. So I am going to stop the recording.